everyone. I'm Andrea and I am on day seven of quarantine. Um, and today is the day that I decided to be productive and do something helpful. And so I decided my two worlds collided with sewing and vacuum um, with something that I didn't even think about until this morning. But uh, a couple of my physician friends had reached out and said, hey, any way you can make some masks? And I said, sure, but I don't know what to make them out of. I don't know what is a good product to filter air. And sh uh, one of my um, physician friends sent me a link to kind of list the best materials to use. And underneath it was surgical mask number one and under number two was vacuum cleaner bags and it still didn't register to me. Um, until this morning when my husband said, hey, do you want me to bring some vacuum bags home from work? Because we could probably make some masks. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> duh. So vac, what's wrong with me? But it took me um, full 24 hours to put those pieces together. So this morning I've been playing around with different designs and what size and what is the best way to go about it and so i think i've decided that my favorite design is this one and it has the ties um, because my first design was this one with you know you can go like this but that's very annoying on the ears i did not like that at all um, it hurts kind of if you had to wear that long term oh my god i'm such a mess um so i thought oh maybe if i did some kind of tie so that you could adjust it to how you know tight you want it so this is my favorite design um, and i'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make it um, i am using these vacuum cleaner bags there are ricard hepa media i think it's important that if you do um, line the insides with vacuum cleaner bags um, that you get the hepa bags um, can you see that uh, because that is gonna filter the air more thoroughly. So, um, bear with me, I'm not technologically um, smart. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try and put this video together in the most beautiful way as I can, but I don't have a lot of experience, so hang tight. Okay, so this is how I make my um, ties for the masks. Um, I use a jelly roll strip because I had it and it's already cut. If you don't have that, um, this is 42 inches long by two and a half inches wide. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is fold, are you getting this Peyton? Fold this little end in and iron. You're gonna do that on each side. So one end, here's the other end. Fold this little end in and iron just cause you don't want them to fray if you're using fabric that has a raw edge. And then I fold this in half, and this is just a guideline so that I can get the center of my uh, strip of fabric. So I iron this all down, just like so, right down the middle, open it up, and then I fold one end in and iron, one end in and iron. There we go, and it does not have to be perfect. If you've ever followed me on my blog, you know that I don't do anything perfect. And fold the other end in and iron. So that both strips are meeting in the middle of the two and a half inch wide strip. Ouch. Watch your fingers with the steam. Jeez third degree burn, last thing I need. And then fold it in half. So now you have a nice finished edge. Fold this in half. Peyton doesn't know it yet, but this is gonna be her job when we start making a bunch of them if we need to. She's so happy about that, I'm sure. So then you have this nice um, folded edge and what you'll end up doing is sewing, start here, sew all the way down and it will look like this. Yep, and then you'll um, take this, you'll cut it in half, take this one, cut it in half, and you'll have your four um, strips you need for your mask. Okay, so this is the bag that I use, and what I do is I cut it apart, so you can see here, 
I have cut it all apart. Um, you want to cut this thing out and then I cut along the seam. So then you have two sides to the bag. I can get two masks out of one bag. Um, and then I cut uh, the mask into, um, first I cut the bag. And the bag is uh, 10 inches by 7 inches. But again, this doesn't have to be exactly 10 inches by 7 inches. You can, you know, kind of work around the material you have. So um, I cut the bag. Then I cut the outside fabric like so. Okay, so you have both of these. And then you come over here. Follow me, Peyton. Um, and I here I have uh, the strings, the ties that we had made earlier. And again, we're not going for perfection here. You can see that I had missed uh, on the back and I just kind of restitched on top of it. I didn't rip out or anything. I mean, we're just kind of going, getting this done. All right. So the next step is to take the bag and you're going to place the raw edge, this is the raw edge that I didn't fold under, to about one, um, I don't know, three quarters of an inch down, half inch down, um, place that there. Again, raw edge, place that um, about a half inch from the bottom. You're gonna wanna fold these up so that they stay onto the inside of the mask. And again, this one you're going to place here this one raw edge again you're going to place here fold these all up and then i need my my little clips here you can use clips or you can use pins whatever you have available so i'm just going to clip these hold them into place <clears throat> like so and then I'm gonna take my top fabric. And you're gonna put the right side down, so right sides together. And then you're just gonna line up the edges. Make sure that you catch that tie. So you're sandwiching the fabric, the tie, the vacuum cleaner bag. Clip it on, clip it on. I'm gonna put a few more of these just to hold into place. I will do this side. Make sure you have it sandwiched. Clip or pin, clip or pin. Clip or pin, and you'll do the same with this side. You're gonna wanna clip the raw edges together. What's going on here? There we go. Raw edges together. And you're gonna sew, or you're gonna surge all the way around. Uh, you want to make sure that you leave about a two inch gap at one end or the other so that you can pull it through. Okay, so you can see that I have surged all the way around. Um, I left a two inch gap a little over um, at the bottom and you can certainly sew. I love my serger, gives nice each edges, neat edges. Um, but if you do sew, I would at least leave a quarter inch, if not a half inch seam allowance. Uh, so once you have that all done, then you pull it all through. This is fun. It's like opening a gift. Is it going to work? <laughs> there have been many a times when it doesn't because I've sewn something incorrectly. But let's see if today is a good day. This side looks good. Yep. And how about this side? Well, today's going to be a good day, folks. I caught all my edges. So here we have the beginnings of a mask. So the next step here, so I'm just gonna kind of pull this flat, is I'm gonna top stitch a quarter inch around the edge. Okay, so you see I have top stitched all the way around the edge now, and now it's just time to put the pleats in. So what I do is, since I don't wanna iron this because you cannot iron this vacuum bag, it will melt, um, is I fold this up at top and I just kind of finger press so that I know where the center is, and I have this amazing Violet Claff seam presser, roller thing that I use for other projects. But then I have a line in the middle, then I fold this up. So I'm really just kind of folding it in force so I have a guideline. You can totally eyeball it too, which if I wasn't being filmed, that's more likely what I would do because 
I'm not a detailed person. Anyway, okay, so you can see I have four, uh, three lines here. So what I do is I just take this top line, you can see I'm kind of folding it, and then I bring it up to the top here, and then, so I create one pleat. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that. Clip that. Sorry for my reach. So this is the trickiest part of this whole thing. And again, I find my line here, I try to grip, Get that, bring it up to the top up to meet that line, and I clip that. Shouldn't reach with that one. And clip that. You can pin, of course, too. I just like these clips because they are easier for me to work with. Um, and then again, you can see that line. I try to get that at the top of my loop, and then I bring it up to meet the bottom of my last pleat, like this. I did try and use my ruffler foot to see if that would work, because uh, that would be easier, but the fabric was too thick and it did not work. So we'll just have to do it old school. So now I have my mask pleats like so, and what I'll do is I'll top stitch here and I'll top stitch there. Okay, so now you can see I just top stitched along here. Make sure you back stitch at both the beginning and end. Hold the stitches into place. Same with this, back stitch, 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 back stitch. And then your mask is complete. So then you can just go ahead, tie it up, and away you go. Stylish. Mm -hmm. Okay, well there you have it. How to make masks. Um, I just want to make a disclaimer that I buy in no way am an expert on these products and I am not a scientist and I do not claim that this is going to save your life, but I figure at least something is better than nothing if you have anybody in need or has a suppressed immune system and you want to protect them a little bit more than doing nothing this would be an option for you um, i did run this through the washer and dryer um, and it held up really well um, you know the vacuum bag held up and the fabric held up um, i do not know if this compromises the filterability of the vacuum bag um, that would be something that i would have no idea how to test for that but um, if you do wash it it holds up pretty well I don't know how many times you could wash it because this is a paper product um, you could do it and it would still hold up but after wash and dry one it still looks good so there you have it folks um, stay healthy stay safe uh, I miss the outside world but hopefully we can stay connected virtually and um, good luck best wishes Till next time, peace.